Everybody and welcome back to another exciting episode of the VOD Squad, the show where we talk about streaming technology. This is episode 180 on April 29th, 2020. I am Clyde, and today I am joined by Matthew Ross. Hey, it's real dark in here. I know. <laughs> Michael Aston is out in space. What? Hello, everybody. And Jimmy Trammell. Yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> it's another day sign yeah. of the apocalypse i think it's got really got really dark i don't know why we uh Hi, it's Hi, been that water. kind of day i've been scrambling all afternoon uh well, you know it's been um a busy day doing tech support and doing homework with the kid basically Every day is a lot of that. I mean, so there's a certain amount of I don't know how your guys' lives are are in the home life thing, but for us, we're busier than normal with everything trying to go keep every on top of everything, and um, we are in what is this week six, mm. something like that, and so yeah, we're I, we need a vacation. <laughs> For this stay at home vacation. You know, I, I'm digging it. My my boss had the talk with us this week that we uh may be coming to an end soon. And I was like, eh, do we have to? Can I just <laughs> you know, because I already have the option of working from home and in my building most people don't come in anymore anyway, even before this. So I think I've kind of established that we can that I can just do this from home all the time because i i have gone in when i needed to i was i had to, on monday i had to go in and pull some equipment out of the storeroom get it configured and then go over to the data center um so i mean it's totally doable <laughs> so yeah i i'm gonna keep this going as long as i possibly can oh the school districts basically decided this year that we would not be going uh, having any school for the rest of the school year. So um, that means <laughs> well, none for the rest of the school year, all the summer break, and we'll see what happens when uh, September rolls around. Because things might be and, more weird. Yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting because I don't think there's going to be a vaccine come fall either. Yep, eh. that's the worry, among other things. We'll see, and the resurgence of it because of the change in the, uh, change in the, of the seasons and all that. Who knows? We don't. Uh, I can say that um, here in this household, it's just, we're just, we're so, we're cooped up and we're so mm -hmm. tired. And so there's a little bit of, of that at are home you, fatigue going on. Are you leaving at all to do things like go for rides and oh, yeah. get fast food and stuff like that? Every, oh, yeah. And we sometimes all go out and once a week or so I go out to... Uh, to go down to work to make sure the servers are still running and things like that, you know, just kind of walk around and say, yep, good. Yep. Okay. Do a couple things while I can, but there's a whole lot of um, uh, time at home and it's, uh, it's just a struggle to be having two full-time jobs and to helping with homework and trying to do it remotely and being around each other and trying to not bump into each other and be in each other's ways. And so, you know, uh, I mean, I, my wife doesn't work full time and her part time work from home job has gone to almost nothing because the state, she does CEUs for uh, tech support for a CEU company. Um, and the state stopped requiring CEUs and certifications right now for massage therapy, which is what she, what they do. And mm -hmm. so they've her drop her work has dropped off almost completely. So despite that, Really, all she's working on most of the time is homeschooling the kids. But even with that being her primary focus, it's driving her crazy just because they don't want to do it, especially our seven-year-old. 
our eight, our 12 year old's fine. She loves school. She's a good worker. She complains on occasion, but very seldom. And, but our, our seven year old is hating every second of homeschooling and mommy telling her to do work is, is mean. <laughs> great student for her teacher. But when mommy asks for it, it's, it's mean. And um, uh, yeah, I, I have to, every once in a while, I'll take like a lunch break in the middle of the day, it, like at 2 PM or something like that, just to go help with the kids or something just to relieve some of the stress. But uh, I feel like I'm handling a bunch of kids at work sometimes too. I shouldn't say that on air. <laughs> it's okay. We they don't watch the show. Nobody watches. <laughs> yeah. Of course, my my daughter's out of the house and all that kind of thing. So I'm kind of past all that. But you know, well, she I just do, got I, married. I should I, I hope do. she's out of the house. Yeah, she's out of the house, unfortunately. But um, yeah, with all this thing going on, I do miss going. You know, occasionally I like to get out of the house. I mean, I would work from home. Was working from home for years, right? But. Um, I would always enjoy, you know, getting out of the house and going to like the coffee shop once in a while. Well, you can't do that now. Yeah, right? you can. Yeah. Well, I guess you can, but you can't have any coffee. Yeah, you just get it to go and walk around. It's hard to work while you're walking and holding a coffee, right? Well, he he wasn't. He was just saying, get out of the house and go get go to the coffee. Would you? Were, oh, I thought you were implying that you like to work from the coffee shop sometimes. Just to... I, I would sometimes. I'd oh, take okay. a laptop or something and and uh, just go there. But but yeah, you, you can't do that anymore, right? Yeah. Yep. It's easy. So the secret is to set up a small table in your backyard, put out a nice cup of coffee with you, and sit down out there on your nice little. You know, outdoor barista. Yeah, just well, hire, be, yeah. hire somebody. Hire somebody to come over and uh, be obnoxious and say your name wrong. Um, and then you've got <laughs> your own private coffee shop. There you go. Yeah, or better yet, set up on the ISS and <laughs> work from there, or podcast from there, vlog from there, or whatever. That's that's how I decided to do it. That way. I feel like I'm out of the house. I put the <laughs> I put the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge behind me. I feel like I'm traveling and just have to look at the screen and I uh, feel like I'm there. You don't want to go to San Francisco. That's one of the hottest spots, isn't it? No. Okay. Actually, California is doing a pretty good job. And while Washington has a, now hit a thousand or so, we're doing a pretty good job too. So, San Francisco okay. was hit pretty hard early on, but they've gotten past that. Yeah. They were one of the earlier hot spots but oh wow all right well hey what are we actually here to talk about i'll tell you we're talking about things that we haven't gotten past quibi quibi is uh, still going to be uh, coming out with their new feature for, that's going to be amazing all the various users out there uh the ability for you to watch your quibi shows on your big screen tv a couple more details have come out since last week where they first announced this uh they're hoping to have this up and running uh for people sometime this month next month and it does look like it's only going to be certain users who are going to have access to this initially so uh this is uh them trying as fast as they can to provide something that it's going to be way too late before you know he's come on come on quibi you're you're you're, you're way behind the game here Anybody else feel like Quibi is um, really setting off on a, on a wrong foot here? Well, it, it they chose to launch a very targeted product, and it just happened to be at the worst possible time. It's not something they could have foreseen. Uh, on paper, spring would be the best time. That's when people are starting to get out more. They're going to be, you know, traveling, using their mobile devices. But right now, nobody is. So um, <laughs> they're trying to pivot. I will give them credit for that because they're trying to pivot quickly. But unfortunately, I, as I mentioned uh, when we talked about this before, I don't think this is the right direction because... The thing that set made Quibi uh, stand out or was their identity was the fact that it is mobile focused 
Mm-hmm. And the fact trying to pivot to casting to your TV completely defeats the whole purpose of their portrait and landscape uh, presentation. So, um, yeah, um, if you're if people are going to be watching this on TV, then your whole vertical video needs to right. go in the trash. Well. The good news is Quibi has both formats all the time, and so if I were watching on my big screen my ten minute Quibi, I would definitely be watching the wide screen. First. But but the problem is, but that's the problem is, in order to pr uh, to produce for Quibi, you must create both vertical and horizontal. Uh, if well, people aren't watching on their mobile and they're never going to see the vertical, why even bother? At well, this think point. Yeah, but didn't you guys at CES see that TV that could go both <laughs> vertical and horizontal? Samsung. Right? Yeah, yeah, that thing was... would take forever. <laughs> we had like four or five of those. Yeah. I mean, it, it was not an uncommon thing. Though, I, what I would say is, if you really think about the medium, like it's it's impractical to design for both aspect ratios and like. If, if you're going to produce something that is capable of looking good on a vertical screen and not cutting off important stuff, there's no way you can have that look good on a horizontal screen. You're adding stuff that you consider irrelevant and not necessarily cut out. It may still look okay, but it can't possibly be meaningfully valid in both formats because the there is such a drastic difference in the width and the amount of what you can see on those two screens. Yeah. And well, I mean, I, I believe that if you, if you know, or if you plan for that going in, then yes, uh, I think it is possible because then you can put stuff that you can add the Easter eggs. You can add the additional content or context in the, in the wide and let the users decide you know what they want if and they're able to switch back and forth but um but again that whole point becomes moot if you're casting it to a tv and then you're only gonna really want the uh landscape and then yeah. what was the point of filming I mean, the vertical in the first place my, uh, my it, argument would be if you're adding things like context and easter eggs to the horizontal then isn't that the optimal viewing solution? Not necessarily. It depends on the context, you know, uh, of the thing. So, and, and it depends how in your storytelling, sometimes it's additional, sometimes it's not necessary. I don't know. I mean, there are ways to utilize it if you, you know, have the imagination. Um, but it's, again, not for everybody. Um, well, and well, you know, going going back to the timing, I mean, this it seems to me like the whole premise of this this service was, you know, for people to watch it on their mobile phone, yeah. you know, yeah. when they're standing in line mm -hmm. at, at, at some place, right? Well, who's standing in line nowadays with, with COVID-19? Well, right? lots and, and of people, actually. Actually, lots of people <laughs> are, because a lot of stores have limited the number of people. Like okay. Walmart has barriers outside and queues set up with uh, marks well, for six feet apart. Um, well, I I've know. never, I, I have mine it, delivered yeah. now, so I, so I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've yet to experience that, but, but yep. anyway, it, you know, I don't know. And then going back to the thing, you know, okay. If they put it up on uh, TV, what do you bet? How many people do you think will use the uh, zoom feature on their TV and stretch that thing out? I have no idea. I hope not. Somebody oh. will do it. I'm sure. I'm sure somebody will. Oh. Of course they will. That's not the point. It's not that the, just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is I just hope they don't do that that atrocious Apple thing where they do the video in the middle and then they put the they fill in the sides with the zoomed in blurry thing right. that just absolutely makes me angry. I literally want to hit stuff when I see that. It's terrible. And it's probably the worst thing that Apple has ever done to our society. It's <laughs> uh, make people that? think that that's, yeah, it's an Apple thing. I well, a lot that. of the news channels also do things like that when they have 
um, news video or something like that that is from a phone. Well, that's because usually they're using iPhones. And that's where that comes from. That's like a native thing on the iPhone when you shoot yeah. video vertical. Yeah. Because <laughs> every every iPhone video I've seen that was shot video does that. I've I've owned nearly every iPhone. Nope. But you, do you shoot do you shoot video vertical? No. That's why you don't <laughs> see that. <laughs> no, but but I mean, yeah, you know, but the but it. I mean, that's not just an Apple thing. You know, are you talking about just on the phone? No, no. So the video about? gets output. Like if I shoot a video on my Android vertical, what mm -hmm. I get is the vertical. When I watch it on 16 by nine, I get the vertical and black on either side. Mm -hmm. Video that was shot. You can tell video that was shot on an iPhone because it'll fill in that black part with zoomed in video. And blurred. And video. blurred because it's zoomed in. Um, and it, so you it, get the it, blur. It gets rid of the black. Um, and it does kind of feel, uh, kind of uh, fit the usually oh, the video a little bit, and it does fill in all that black yeah. kind of well. But it is a not big annoying. I find it super problem. annoying. Yeah, I don't, I don't get shooting vertical video. But that's that's <laughs> been a thing that, that Apple's that's just... been kind of uh, condoning for many years. They've been, but yeah, uh, that's a different topic. But uh, yeah. yeah. Um. Hey guys, uh, so there's a service out there that's called Popcorn Time. Popcorn Time is a free online service which allows you to watch pirated videos. It's basically a website interface that, let, that gives you access to the various on the internet uh, videos that are easily uh, got through various clients like Bit BitTorrent and uh, lets you watch them with a simple search for what you're looking for. And there's a new ver a way for you to access it. They've made a new service called Popcorn Time for Kids or Popcorn Time Kids. It's essentially the same thing with a filter. So it's only providing kid-friendly internet. So your kid can pirate video for free <laughs> and easily on the internet. Yeah. Uh, no, this is brilliant for Popcorn Time. It is stupid for people to do it because, guys, remember, people who were watching things on Popcorn Time years ago were sued by people tra tracking their IP addresses, so probably not a good idea to be watching this. But come on, this is super smart for Popcorn Time to be doing. Because yeah. I'm gonna trust viruses pirated everywhere. video for my kids. Hey, yeah. uh, there are people who will pirate everything. Yeah. Oh, sure. I just mean and, that- And there's the, they're the ones that get their identity stolen. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, with, with with something like Popcorn Time, um, the chances of you getting your identity stolen are very slim because you're not actually providing any information. Um, the you're, chance you're providing for providing access to your phone, uh, no, no, your not device. not necessarily a phone or anything that had uh, that has personal information. Um, the like my Roku doesn't have any of my personal information other than my, oh. you know, login name, but that's that, it. That that would be a smarter way to do it. But I, I mean, I would, but I'd there are I mean, people. people access Popcorn Time from a myriad of devices. Is my point. Right. Um, right. The the only thing that this really does it just opens you up to potential lawsuits and uh, trouble for. So uh, pirating uh yeah don't you <laughs> don't 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 do this there and everything that you could want is available somehow and very easily this is not this is not uh <laughs> okay so there are there are a set, set of people out there who would who don't feel like they can afford paying for movies and they are pirates and, or they don't feel like they, they do the, the movie. So, uh, for example, I know a guy. I will keep his, um, his identity secret. But he does pirate movies. And he pirates them by downloading them through things like the Pirate Bay. And it's like, this is a gr this movie. I don't know if I want to watch this movie or not. He will go ahead and download it. And if he likes it, he goes out and buys it. Because he's like, I will support a movie I like. No problem. 
But if I'm going to be sitting down and watch, spending two mm-hmm. hours of my time on a movie, it, and if I don't like it, I really hope I didn't spend anything for it. So, yeah, he'll go out and like uh, watch stuff that's on Netflix and things like that. And right now is a horrible time to be doing this, quite frankly, because there's a lot of free stuff out there. You really don't need to pirate. Uh, I do agree with that. Um, but I've seen people that that's what they do, and they make those decisions, and they actually use that as a way of doing it. Now, is that justification for piracy? No. It's just a, the reality that we know that there's a certain amount of people out there who do pirate, and that's never going to change. So the thing about popcorn time is it makes it super, super, super easy because you just go to the website. I don't even think you log in with anything. You just go use it, yeah. and you just streams it over a web. You know, No plugins downloaded that would be required. It just streams it. And so there's very little risk. That's one of the problems with pirates' websites is sometimes you would download something and it has other things yeah. attached you don't necessarily want, but there's no risk because it's sandbox inside your your browser hopefully, and uh, hopefully. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh... but so so but let's take that that person that uh, that that imaginary person is and say, great, your kid needs access to watch some movies. Let's see that brand new Trolls movie came out. Would you uh, let them watch it on popcorn time? I think it's unanimous here. No. Nope. Oh, I'm. I'm. Well, none of us would, right? But but I'm sure there's a lot of people that would. There yeah, might be. Think, there I, might. I, well, I, a lot I, of people I, probably I, don't. If their kids are doing it, they don't even know it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Most well, people don't <laughs> know exactly what apps are on your kid's phone. See. Yeah, I think. I mean, the most important thing to me here is beyond it being illegal and and unethical in most people's opinions um, is the fact that when you're watching a pirated content you don't really know what it is um, I can't tell you back in the days when I did pirate college student days um, I can't tell you how many times I downloaded a song that turned into something else halfway through <laughs> or a movie that wasn't the full the movie all the way through the movie so, and while they are putting up an effort to provide kid-friendly content here, um, I would say that an organization like this is probably not going through extensive testing and validation mm-hmm. and stuff. So it is very possible that you are in, inadvertently going to expose your children to things you don't intend to. So I would say at the very least, utilize if you want something kid safe utilize something where they put in at least a modicum of real effort to validate the content like the kids mode in netflix or disney plus or something like that yeah much much if like i would do then why bother with the kids mode right so much like i would do at work uh i have my the network my connect my kids connect to is a completely separate vlan with uh, I use open DNS. So I let open DNS be the babysitter. Cause ah. you know, just like you would at work, you use a DNS uh, categorization to d- determine whether or not, uh, someone should be accessing a right. thing. And I let, I, I let open DNS be the babysitter. I got to go in and make sure that popcorn time is in there as a <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no. all right well all that's right. better than some people are doing so that's fair mm-hmm. so uh i i have some really good news if you are an apple apple uh, carplay user and you have a porsche uh apple has uh apple no excuse me porsche porsche has uh, released a, a new uh, updating options for your Porsches, which allows you access to Apple CarPlay. These are new ad, uh, head-end devices for uh, stereos inside your uh, your Porsches for different kinds. They have the double-din unit with 7-inch display available with all types of features, including USB support, Bluetooth connectivity, and SD card slot. And that model is even compatible with, and- with Android Auto. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they also have a smaller one, which is specifically used for the older Porsches, like back in the, the 60s. Single din. With a single DIN, and has a little tiny for, uh, for a little tiny uh, screen, uh, so you can still be able to use your Apple CarPlay uh, features on. Uh, these are, will be available for you for about mm, anywhere from fifteen hundred to seventeen hundred dollars. 
It's this, actually not bad for something like this. Uh, there have been companies that have been making uh, for people that didn't want to destroy their dashes, try and put in modern radios. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and those, even before smartphone integration, were around $1,000. So getting one that's from Porsche for your classic Porsche for that price, I don't think is a big deal. I, so I, a couple of things. I understand what you're saying from a Porsche perspective and, and true vendor, but those are insanely expensive. For, <laughs> Not really. And that, but that was my point. Uh, right. If you go vintage, uh, vintage audio, which makes vehicle specific, uh, yeah, I, again, stereos. I, I, get, I get that. I'm just saying like a good deck, you can get a really solid deck for a thousand dollars. But the point was uh, that, uh, it, looks like aftermarket this is something that looks like it belongs in the car well, um, which is one yeah, reason people especially with these cars is one reason that people won't upgrade their radio mm. is because they don't want something that looks like it's aftermarket well that and that was going to be my second comment was i get why you would put this in like a 90s porsche i don't get why you would put this in a 60s really vintage well, look at the picture that. that picture right there is like an early 70s 911 yeah but and it looks like it belongs there the top one you mean yeah yeah it it doesn't i mean it kind of almost looks See, and that that that's the point <laughs> if you put in a regular kind of uh almost. single din aftermarket radio it just looks stupid um yeah i whereas agree that, with that looks it's like got the sliders, the sliders for the heater and all. I mean, if yeah. you're getting a 60s, <laughs> remember those? Yeah. If you're getting a '60s vintage Porsche, just be vintage, man. That's what I'm saying. Don't no. put a modern because deck in. most places don't have anything to listen to on the radio anymore. It's all commercials and crap. So, um, yeah. no. And I guess uh, it, I, I guess if you wanted to be cheap, you could just you know prop your phone up there, couldn't you? Because you wouldn't have anything, <laughs> any way to hear it. Oh, you just stick in a, a portable Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, no. <laughs> Especially <laughs> if you're running a concourse level 911, you know, it, if, you're, if, if you're, if you're a if you vintage 911 owner and you want audio in your car, I, I don't think money's going to be an issue. <laughs> um, you're going to, you're going to spend the thing to get you what you need at, and, you know, maintain that concourse level. Uh, but, uh, and yeah, if you, it, and if you've, it's sold by Porsche, Porsche made Porsche OEM, you could still say mm -hmm. it's all OEM equipment on it. I get it. Right. But, and yeah. I, I just went through this with my, my truck. Um, I needed, uh, something, I needed a radio that would allow me to play Bluetooth. And I ended up having to put in a deck that I really hate. Uh, it has those oh. slider. It has those slider controls that Jimmy was talking about, and <laughs> I, I don't like the way it looks. But you know what? Who cares? It was cheap, and it got me sound. So, nice. and that was. Yeah. But yeah, I. But like I said, I I totally see the market for this. I don't think any of us are in that market. Um, but I. This this is good. Uh, yeah, for those I, owners, I, I mean the price. Uh, I agree with Clyde. The, the price is not that bad. I mean, you're getting something that's manufactured by the manufacturer that made your car. Right? So, it's engineered specifically for the Porsche. And let me put it this way: uh, if if you're driving one of the Porsches that we're talking about, if you wanted to upgrade your shift knob, that's probably eight hundred dollars by itself. <laughs> so an additional couple hundred bucks that gives you CarPlay and possibly Android audio uh, at the same time, mm -hmm. I think I think it's it's a no brainer. I can see you've convinced me. <laughs> I'm going to buy a vintage '60s 911. And <laughs> <laughs> so I bet you I could find you one to sell you cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple, you know, a couple, you know, a couple ten grand. 
Well, I was going to say, because if uh, about 15 years ago, nobody wanted the early to mid 70s 9-11s, you could get them for like 1500 bucks. Now? Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, you know what else we can get right uh, coming up soon? You can now get, uh, or not now, you will soon be able to get uh, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It's coming out on May the 4th. Uh, for on Disney Plus, along with a couple other things like the previously mentioned Disney uh, Mandalorian uh, uh, documentary, and also it looks like the final, uh, the finale of the Clone Wars animated series will also be shown on the fourth. Uh, why? For everybody. Why are they launching this on a f Monday? That makes because absolutely no sense. It should be launched on a weekend, like a Friday or Saturday, so people would actually sit down and watch it. Because Star May the Fourth is um, Star Wars Day, and they've co-opted it. That's and just I be dumb. <laughs> and I believe they even started looking to possibly try to, you know, litigate people who use May the Fourth. It Too felt bad. really they, weird they, there for something. They don't own it backed May off. the Fourth, so <laughs> uh, it's okay. Re Re Revenge of the Fifth is what I say. Yeah, I um. Oh, isn't that Revenge of the Nerds? <laughs> I love this because May the 4th is my daughter's birthday. Oh. So she's excited to have some Star Wars content, which she's a big Star Wars fan, coming out on Star Wars Day on her birthday. So it's like a birthday present for her from, from Disney to get her Mandalorian content in the final episode of Clone Wars. Um, we already own... Um, Rise of Skywalker, so that's not going to benefit us in any way. But um, yeah, this is good. I'm, you know, for Star Wars fans that for some weird reason don't already own it, this is good. <laughs> I'm, I'd be surprised that there's a lot of those out there, but um, there might be some, I guess. So good. I'm kind of looking forward to the uh, documentary of the Mandalorian. It looks pretty interesting. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. They did some really cool stuff, and I want to see all the details about it. Very excited. Not interested at all. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the excuse me, the uh, the uh, the rise of Skywalker was disappointing for me, and the the Mandalorian documentary. Yeah, I could watch it, I guess, but not, none of the other stuff sounds all that interesting to me for the most part. I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. Because you're wrong. Okay, I can be wrong <laughs> and feel good about it. I, I mean, mm. hey, to, to each their own. But I, I enjoyed it. I, I like the Rise of Skywalker. I too own it, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Ruined Star Wars. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, we could go into a huge debate about this. I enjoyed Rise of Skywalker. I didn't think it was brilliant or a masterpiece or anything yeah. like that. But I very much enjoyed it, and I, I didn't. I wasn't disappointed in it. I wasn't. I, I was joking. It didn't ruin Star Wars. That happened a long time ago. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the next story. Hulu. Hey guys, if you are a Hulu user and you've been using an Apple device to watch it for some reason, there have been since yesterday. There's been reports of a lot of people having trouble even launching the app or having trouble streaming shows through the Apple devices. Uh, there has been a little bit of reports that uh, it, there might be an update coming shortly for Apple devices that may fix this issue. But uh, as far as I know, there have been no updates about it yet. I'm curious if this is like what happened with Netflix and Apple initially for. Originally, Netflix used uh, different, uh, um, different um, uh, what do they call it, um, uh, distributor, internet distributor for Netflix, and they got the better feed, and they got less. Uh, they had different, um, you know, different not not different streaming issues or no streaming streaming issues initially when they when you were using Netflix on an Apple device. And um, I wonder if they have a similar thing going on here where Hulu is using some type of different uh, distribution platform, which is making it uh, I don't, have issues. I, I don't think so, because I can, I can tell you my experience, right? Because I did experience this. Mm -hmm. uh, I typically watch news in the morning on my iPad as I'm, you know, shaving or showering and all. And I experienced the same thing. And um, the app had just gotten updated. Right, so I think it was the update they put in the app. 
Okay. And the, way, the way I got around it was I just went to the website on the iPad and it worked just fine. Yeah, and I was going to point out, I mean, it's obviously a device issue. Um, there's something with their app or the Apple stuff is not working because it. there are no problems on the Roku. There are no problems on the Android TV. I use it in my browse. I use the dedicated Windows app all the time. I used it just today, no problems. Uh, if it only Apple Apple devices are having this problem, so it's not a Hulu issue. It's something in the app uh, slash hardware department. Um, I, but, I think it would be the app because if it's the hardware. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying there may have been the something with uh, with hardware that is interrupt is interacting with the app you know because stuff changes on both sides and you know you can't always program around it uh or you don't anticipate it but yeah i i, I suppose but yeah it's obviously ios uh, uh it was working before but before they updated the app yep so yep my ipad hardware didn't change mm -hmm. But I mean, it, but what I'm talking about is in the past, there have been like updates to apps where they do like an update for a feature across all platforms, not realizing that, oh, on that device, this feature mm -hmm. in the hardware will cause a problem or with mm -hmm. this new I feature see. is what I'm saying. I see. So I, I don't see. know if it's specifically the app that's broken or it's something that's interaction with the hardware, but it's only on the Apple side. It's not uh, happening on the, all the myriad of other devices. So it, it, it was curious that, you know, I could go to the Hulu website on my iPad and it worked just But fine. that's in the browser, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some uh, hardware. So that's not, but uh, that's not using the, the app is what I was saying. Is it, It's something with the app. It's whether it's mm -hmm. the actual app that's broken or it's something, a feature in the app that's interacting yeah. with the hardware. Right. Um, it's it's something. So, But, but um, I did, I, yeah. I, I did experience this though. I, it wouldn't, mm -hmm. what, what I got was when you start up the app, it would just sit there and hang. You just have to force quit the app out yeah. of it, and then and then it, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't, wouldn't go. And I, I will say, I ran into that about three or four months ago on the Roku, but that was during a beta test uh, mm -hmm. when we were, you know, and it was again an in interaction with the OS on the the Roku uh, caused a problem with the existing app um, because. I got I got an updated version, um, and oh, it broke it, and then they worked together and they fixed it, and, and that was the whole point of the beta was to make sure that the public didn't have to deal with that. So, so yeah, Apple users are having beta problems. <laughs> oh, that must be the worst. Hey, uh, you know that Trolls uh, World Tour was that movie that they released uh, direct to streaming and actually did fairly well. According to many estimates, it made, uh, it made about $95 million. And after basically the fees that the, uh, uh, the streaming services took out of that, it looks like that they made about $77 million in profit out of that. I mean, by profit, I mean uh, net they, they made out of all that. Uh, this was a big deal because uh, it was such a, uh, a quote unquote success. And it looks like uh, NBC Universal has said that, yeah, we're going to be starting to do this kind of thing where we're going to be releasing things both to theaters and to the online platforms using this platform, using this uh, mm -hmm. kind of streaming idea. Uh, the big thing is that it looks like AMC is taking this to heart and saying, okay. We're not going to show any videos from from NBC Universal uh, okay. for the, uh, for their thousand theaters as long as this kind of deal is in place. So, is this the tipping point? Are we seeing the cha the the change that is eventually it was going to happen eventually anyways? Where well, I, I think it's important to look at the the model that theaters operate under to understand what situation you're dealing with here, right? Movie theaters pay a rental fee that is significant to get those films in their theaters. Mm -hmm. 
And part of that rental fee is with the expectation that they only have one solution to get these movies, which is going to the theaters. So it's going to drive a lot of traffic there. So it seems like they're starting to play with that model. It does not make sense to me and obviously to AMC for them to pay a large rental fee when they don't have any kind of exclusive exclusive guarantee. Um, and there's so many other options for customers. Now, that doesn't mean that the, that's not going to change the model. So my expectation is this starts to shift the model of how things are, are going to happen. Um, in the future, maybe those rental fees come down or it goes to a strict um, portion of box office uh, ticket sales or something like that. So normally it's a rental fee and a portion of ticket sales, which effect effectively equates to um, a movie theater makes very little, if any money at all, on mm -hmm. the actual ticket sales. In most cases, mm -hmm. basically no money on ticket sales. And they have to compensate through concessions. That's why you pay $20 for a, a popcorn. Not really that much, but you get the point. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> at, at AMC, you pay $20 for the worst popcorn <laughs> on the planet. Yeah. 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 Well, so, uh... it, 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 this move goes contrary to the model that they have right now the model has to change if they're going to do this yeah. well i mean you know kind of goes back to the COVID 19 thing right i mean who's really going to want to take their kids to the movie theaters you know after well, what, all of what's once everything's back to normal every, most people um i don't mm. think I, I the movie theaters aren't going away um anytime soon uh my favorite theater probably will be because they're very small and they're uh, not going to weather this. Um, but, you know, the AMCs and the Regals, they're not going away. Uh, and it, we, we talked about this at the very, at the, when the theaters first started shutting down, was the idea, is this the point where right. they're going to be forced to bargain? Um, they're, they're not going to want anything to change. They, they're des desperately going to want to recoup the money that they lost from the time that they were shut. Um, and they view this as, they're going to view this as hostile. Um, I, I think this is the, this is the point where, uh, the discussion, uh, happens or becomes more realistic but I don't expect any change anytime soon. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to see things like NBC, who is now getting their own streaming platform. I mean, they've got uh, a bunch of different things that then they buy Zumo and they've got mm -hmm. their Peacock brand and all those other streamings and the other various services they've got. And Disney is bringing their stuff out directly to their services now. You're going to see uh, a lot of things go for, for directly to Netflix and to to uh, Amazon, and and you're going to see things brought up by Apple. And you're going to see a lot of this, especially for the stuff that isn't considered necessarily a blockbuster. But you're going to see a lot more blockbusters. I think you're the lot. You're going to see a lot more uh, theaters basically carrying blockbusters at this point. It's going to be that big movie that's pretty much guaranteed to, uh, to make a good amount of money. So, yeah. well, I think I, those are the ones that the, that all the creators and the studios want to milk as much as they can. So they'll say, "Sure, we'll do the phase theater first, then release, then buy, you know, all that." So, we'll see. Yeah, Jimmy, you were. You were no, the, the only thing I was going to say is that yeah, I mean the movie theaters. I don't know to get people back out the, to the way it was. Uh, I mean, they're going to have to do. I mean, I, I think Clyde's right. I don't think they're necessarily going to go away, but but I don't know if it's going to get back to the way it was before this. Right? I think I think that there's going to be some experimentation in the short term with different kinds of models, it, it, and so you know it, it may be there's one of the film companies that does a lot of. I can't remember the name. Um, Cord Killers uh, talked a little bit about it where they were, they were discussing this company that um, they were letting theaters get their movies rental free so they didn't have to pay the rental price. Mm -hmm. They still were sharing a portion of ticket sales. Mm -hmm. um, also, so 
I think there's going to be a variety of things. You're going to have places like the Draft House and like here there's the movie house and eateries um, that they are not just about a movie. It's it's like the full date night experience. You got dinner and a movie all in one place. And so there's a lot more. I think those kinds of places that have differentiated themselves from being just a place to watch the hit movie that's out right now, those places are going to do a lot better. But there's going to be some experimentation, I think. Some some of the studios might try doing a, um, a pure portion of ticket sales thing. They may reduce rental fees and increase that. I think there's going to be some experimentation. I think theaters are going to experiment. But, I mean, one of the things that you find places like the Draft House, they excel and they succeed because they not only show the blockbusters, but they also have themed events. I remember one of my favorite things was going to a Queen sing-along. So, you know, they showed a bunch of Queen music videos and, and with the lyrics so we could all sing along and the whole place was singing to it. So, uh, you know, and that didn't, that cost more than a normal movie. We paid like 20 bucks or 25 bucks a person to go to that. And it was a blast. I loved it. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that places are going to find ways to differentiate that are going to find ways to draw people out and the good places that are creative and, and uh, engine have some ingenuity they're going to survive and they're going to maybe even excel and do better in this. I also could imagine things like um, theaters pairing up with studios where when you pay an extra $15 on your movie ticket, you get a digital copy of the movie at the same time as you get to see it in theaters and then you get to go home and you can keep watching it. So, I mean, there's all kinds of interesting things that we can see, you know, going back to the old DVD digital movie combo that kind of thing you could there's no reason they couldn't do that so we'll see what happens mm -hmm. Hmm. all right uh let's see here anchor remember anchor anchor's that uh, uh that app that you could use on your phone in order to make yourself uh, your, your own little podcaster anchor has a new feature which allows you to take your video that you have of whatever kind of zoom video or other kind of recording you've made and be able to upload that video and it automatically rips out the audio for you for integration into their app. Uh, this sounds a lot like uh, any, you know, audio rip tool from an MP3, but it is specifically designed to convert your video into a podcast, which, uh, you know, it seems like it could be useful for some people who do that kind of thing. What do you think, Clyde? Should we uh, rip our videos out and make it into a podcast and stick it on, uh, on Anchor? Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's basically what I have to do when I try to make the audio is I have to run it through uh, VLC to separate the or uh, the audio track and then save it and then add the metadata then right. convert it to MP3 then upload it someplace. WSCOS1 points out that Anchor is owned by Spotify as well. And that's fine as mm -hmm. long as Spotify yeah. doesn't somehow... That's the only like, way say, to get your stuff on Spotify. Ours. So... Um, only on Anchor, really? Well, I'm saying that for for like us, that that would be like one of the only ways to get our stuff on Spotify. I gotta say, um, like, there's a lot of really boring podcasts out there. Can you imagine what it would be like to listen to our phone calls and not <laughs> this wonderfully, brilliantly scripted dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Just All I have to say, say is that I have listened to some dog slow, poorly made podcasts, and by turning on the times one point two to times one point four speed and skip silence, <laughs> they are blazingly fast and fun to listen to, and just they're great. And so all we have to do is pre-do that to ours. In fact, that's what I would do. I would say this video was modified. This audio was modified to <laughs> remove silence and to increase the speed of our talking. It's just. <laughs> Make it that by default, and then the poor people who actually listen to those things at times two speed, they can hear those as chipmunks, and that'd be fine too. So, <laughs> all right, the VOD squad at times two. 
All right. Uh, last uh, story of the week today is about Twitch. Twitch is making a change to their uh, site. Uh, they're adding a directory listing that will allow you to easily find the various esports tournaments. Uh, in this, in our continuing series of why hasn't this been a thing before, they uh, are going to be adding a link that uh, basically gives all the popular tournaments as they are running on Twitch and making it easy for you to find the one you're looking for. Because, you know, that time when you were trying to get that... Uh, that uh, world's first on World of Warcraft or that uh, Rocket League championship vi video and you really wanted to see what was going on and you couldn't find the link. It's going to be easier to find now. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, Yay. if only I could find the, like, stream that I'm actually streaming on Twitch. Find that, your own stream? That, yeah. Uh, if it didn't <laughs> bury it uh, and actually showed the stream that I'm following is live, um, that would be great. Are, are you saying their algorithm is poor, is, is, is poorly uh, biased against things that are popular? Or it things, it's biased against things that are un, not popular. Oh, okay. <laughs> not in your opinion. In my opinion. I gotcha. <laughs> so the things that aren't as popular, even though it's in your list of I follow this and I want to know when they're live, doesn't always show in the live now. You have to dig through like 20 pages of stuff on the left-hand side. Uh, like I to... just did right now <laughs> to bring up this stream on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> it's an example. So It's interesting that, uh, that eSports e hasn't... I mean, it kind of has blown up in one way in the fact that it's uh, that your the racing eSports has kind of uh, won this kind of... what what What's the next big thing to come out of this uh you know our changes here we're dealing with are the williams sisters gonna play wii tennis i would watch <laughs> that but i would want a video a, a, a picture of them far enough back that you can see them <laughs> you know i would totally watch that. i want to see them standing right next to each other and elbowing them. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay uh, yeah and that's the news for the week, guys. All right. And that brings us to the point in the show where we like to say thank you to all of you that support us week to week and month to month. Our patrons are awesome. If you uh, find some value in the show and you would like to support us, uh, patreon.com slash the VOD squad is the place to do that. You can also hit sub up here on uh, Twitch. Uh, we completely... Uh, accept that, but if you want to cut Jeff Bezos out of the equation, patreon.com slash the VOD squad. Stick uh, and, it to Vegas. I, I, I say Bezos. go ahead and um, put him in the equation because it's his money, not yours. <laughs> well, but the thing is, even though he's giving people $5 to donate, he's keeping half of that. So he's that's actually true. only giving $2.5 yes. to donate. Um, which I always thought was funny, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. Um, why don't we get uh quick to some rants, some raves and, uh, yeah. All right. Rants, raves, go. what you got? I just wanted to quickly uh, note something. Uh, I did happen to go through the uh, a Walmart recently because you know I had to go and buy some stuff that Walmart happened to have the things I was looking for. So I went into there and I happened to be walking through through the uh, uh, the electronic section, and there was this um, uh, you know display of TVs, and I was just shocked. The giant 58-inch TVs were two hundred and forty dollars. Two two eight seventy nine. Yeah, they, they, but they're giant TVs, and mm -hmm. you know, high sense for ones. And the Samsungs on the other side were not much more expensive. And I was just going, oh my goodness! I know I just recently bought myself a fifty-inch, and now fifty-five is that much. And oh my god! Oh. Mm -hmm. So now it. it, it, it if you can find one, I imagine now is an excellent time if you want to buy. The question is, should you? Oh, I don't know. And that's what I, I've been talking about for the last year, that 55-inch TVs are less than 300 bucks. Um, no. You can get a 60-inch or uh, actually 65 for less than four. Um, 
if you know what you're looking for. I saw this, that Hisense 58 inch uh, recently when my friend was asking about uh, what she should get for a new TV. And 58 is a weird size. Mm-hmm. Sure. That, that, that That's a weird size. It's not quite 60. Yeah. And, but for like, yeah, 20, like 10 bucks more, you get the 60 inch. But, um, and I actually looked at it because it was like, it was 10 bucks more than the TCL 55 and like 10 bucks less than the TCL 60. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it just, 58 just seemed like a weird size. So, um, yeah, a good deal if that's if that's what you want. Um, that was an Android TV too, if I recall correctly. Uh, I'm trying to bring up my picture. It looks like the answer to your question was uh, maybe. I don't know. All I know is it's a 4K HDR R6 yeah, yeah. series, which uh, which actually it's a, Roku. it's a Roku TV. Oh, that one is okay. So there was a, a an Android version that I was seeing because I was seeing I saw it at a different place not mm-hmm. at Walmart. Um and and that actually kind of tipped the scales a little bit more for me because yeah, you can get Roku TVs everywhere and I'm going to plug a Roku into anything that I buy. I don't want the built-in. <laughs> but give me a built-in Android TV. Yeah, you know. Sure. I I I play around with that. So I'm just so flabbergasted at how expensive really big TVs have gotten. If you don't need the premium you can get a really nice one for cheap. Yeah, but you're you're using the term really big. Because and, and about a year ago, and I, I'll remind you guys, I went to Costco with my kids, and I, I saw these TVs, and I said, oh, that thing's so cute. Look at it. And then I realized, oh, wait, that's a 50. <laughs> like I have in my living room. It looks tiny compared to all the other TVs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 50, 55, 60 are not really big anymore there mm. <laughs> yeah i mean that 50 on the shelf looked like a like a 32 did a couple years before that um yeah. but yeah i can remember the first le or lcd uh tv i bought was only 40 inches i was gonna say i hope you remember the first LA, uh the oled tv that you bought <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> because that it's one, currently yeah. hanging in your living room um, and now the the first flat screen. I mean, the one I had before that was a thirty two tube. Uh, yep, uh, t- it was thirty two inch tube television, right? And then uh, and then the first flat screen I bought was forty inch, and I, and I thought that was plenty big, you know, well, at the time. But, I remember but, but because the first flat screen that I bought, I'm still using. I bought my forty two inch uh, plasma, which my parents are using because they needed it, and then I. Uh, a couple months later, I bought my 50 inch plasma, which is still in my living room because yeah. nothing beats the plasma quality. And I will use that thing until the day that it dies and can no longer be repaired. Yeah. I like the plasmas, but just we don't have the room for it. You know, there's too much sunlight that comes into our room, mm-hmm. it, it, it bleaches out the picture. Plasmas <laughs> are great if you have a dark room. See, I've got my big picture window behind me and the TV there, and I don't have problems. So, yeah, it's, but yeah, it, it all depends. I, I'm a yeah, lot we, further we, north. We got windows on both sides, so the sun comes in, mm-hmm. and when the sun hits the screen on plasma. Oh, no, but I'm just saying, uh, down in the land of alligator threat, yeah. uh, you sunlight's a lot more of an issue than up here right. where it's I mean, dark that, 90% of the time. And I wanted to get a plasma when I bought that one, mm-hmm. right? But then I, I knew, okay, the sunlight and all that, yeah, we better go LCD. Yep. Which is what we did. So. All right. Who's up next? Nobody? I'll, um, I'll go ahead and talk. I, I've watched a couple of things this week. The first one was Letter for the King on Netflix, just came Mm -hmm. out. Um, It is a fantasy uh, TV show. It is more oriented for maybe kids. Uh, It's not like a kid's show per se, but it's it's more like PG-13-ish. 
So it's child appropriate. Um, I would say it's probably a little slow for most kids, but I'm enjoying it enough. I don't think it's great, but it's, it's fun enough to watch. So if you're looking for something and you like fantasy, you'll probably not hate it. I don't know that that's an overwhelming <laughs> recommendation, but um, you might check it out. Uh, what I will say is if you enjoyed the Clone Wars TV show at all, you owe it to yourself to watch the new season. The last episode of Clone Wars was one of the greatest things Star Wars that has ever been made, in my opinion. It was absolutely amazing. I loved every second of it. I was totally stoked and excited at the end of the episode. I was on the edge of my seat and, um, you know, it was absolutely phenomenal. Some of the best lightsaber fighting scenes and storyline. One of my favorite characters coming to um, her, um, her pinnacle in the show. And it's really, really good and very much worth watching. So if you liked Clone Wars at all, you should definitely watch this season. And um, the first three episodes are, are good and enjoyable, but once it moves on to um, to the other characters, it it's even better and it's amazing. Hmm. So, so Mike, let me ask you a question: For somebody who's never watched any of the animated series of Star Wars, which one do I start off with? In what order do should I watch them? Um. I would say that that kind of depends on your perspective of the prequels mm -hmm. um, and specifically the Clone Wars show. You, you have something to say, Clyde? I was going to say, you got to do it in chronological order, starting with the Ewok cartoon from the 80s. Ah, no! <laughs> no! No! We <laughs> said no. all of the Star Wars animated anything. You obviously do it in chronologic, uh, chronological release date, so... You have to start with the Ewoks. Uh, Wouldn't that show technically the start with the uh, animated uh, animated bit in I, the middle of the um, Star Wars Christmas special? I don't know. I've never <laughs> made it I think through it that. Would. I think. Of a... I think that uh, um, Rebels, <laughs> in my opinion, Star Wars Rebels was slightly better than the Clone Wars mm -hmm. series. However. Um, my favorite character of all animated, really one of my favorite characters of all Star Wars is from the Clone Wars and is a major character in this new series. It's really about what, her. Was and, that the guy that uh, uh, that Matt does a really good impression of? No. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, so anyways... I, if you like the prequels, if you especially if you like the Clone Wars and and Revenge of the Sith, then I think the Clone Wars may be the better place for you to start. That's chronologically the first one, um, and it's really good. And then Rebels is is really, in my opinion, Rebels is an outstanding series, and and very good as well. But yeah. this of the new series is peak, top quality Star Wars in my opinion. Yeah. Of the prequels, I think Revenge of the Sith was my favorite of those three. Right? Clone yeah. Wars was pretty good. The first one, they, there were certain scenes that was pretty good in that one, right? Yeah. But the movie it overall... It wasn't 100% awful, but it was no. an awful movie. It, it was the oh, worst wow. of all the Star Wars movies, I would say, would, would be episode one, oddly yeah. enough. Yeah. I would like to see that debate on an internet video. Which movie was worse? Please Episode don't, because one. then I gotta leave because I have no interest <laughs> in any of that. There All is right, a well, great, there is a great video if you ever want to spend a few minutes watching it called "What If the Phantom Menace Was Great." It is a YouTube video that was made around that time, and it is really good. It does show how the Phantom Menace actually could have been a good movie, and what kinds of changes they could have made that wouldn't have changed the movie all that much and would have been able to mostly use the content we recorded and make it a good movie. So I think that's, it, it goes to show that the movie itself 
had had some very significant mistakes made, but overall, it like, but it it, 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 it at its core could have been a good movie sure with did. some minor changes. The the part that made me cringe was the race scene. You get rid of the race scene, and you know it's not that bad, All right? <laughs> but anyway. Uh, all right, so I guess I'll go next. Um, oh, uh, so, oh are, are we done? We're moving on. <laughs> Sorry, we're moving on. I guess. I yep. Had to. So, <laughs> so I guess I'll go next. So I made a purchase. Oh no! Oh, yeah. So I bought one of those, and the reason why I bought that is to make it work with. Oh, oh is that the Logitech? Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, so the the Harmony remote, right? It it, it uh, comes with a charging. Mm -hmm. It sits on a charging stand, kind of like that. So I got it all set up, and I got to tell you, you know, I don't know why I'm so late to the game, but you know, just to be able to walk downstairs and say, "Hey, lady, turn on the TV." <laughs> the amp comes on, the TV comes on, and the Apple TV comes on. But all. you can't do that with the Apple Home Kit. That's already integrated into all of your Apple devices. Well, I mean the the amplifier, no, right? Okay. The amplifier and the amplifier powers everything, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, the um, the Fire TV. Cube. Remember, I got a home theater system. It all no, no, I down, understand. Yeah. Right, right. But the the Harmony remote will will do that. No, no, I meant I was talking going with the Echo over the Apple Home Kit. Oh yeah, well, you know, I've been wanting to get one of these anyway, mm -hmm. All right? But, but yeah, to for the Harmony Remote, you've got to you got to go with this guy. They 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 got it proprietary to work only with this. <sighs> hey, so I used to but, be but it, big but, it, but it's it's well worth it. I mean, we're Amazon Prime. Yeah, you know, subscribers know, so it's 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 well worth it. You know, it's nice too, just for the Echo Dot perspective to say, "Hey, what's the status of my orders?" Right? Just yep. say oh. what they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, uh, I'm curious about the Harmony Remote. I used to be a big Harmony Remote fan because, you know, having to change inputs and change different, uh, you know, just having three devices and that had to be set up correctly is enough to make you want a Harmony remote. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it used to be, it had a horrible interface that you had to, uh, you know, go through a website, had this web weird UI and plug it in over USB to plug it in and to, and to figure the stupid thing. Has that improved? It has. You just download okay. a smartphone app and you can do it all through there. Great. Thank you, Logitech. So it's the same for thing. It's just better. on a smartphone instead of your laptop now. Well, the, the old Ajax web app thing. Was I, I never had a problem with that. I've got my, my uh, Harmony from like 2004, uh, 2005 still sitting in the other room. Um, I might, the number of devices I can use it with now are minimum. Um, which makes me mad because I love that thing, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it 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 took a little bit of uh, reprogramming how your brain thinks right. about it. Once you start thinking in you know their uh, logic, then it it I think it was great. Uh, I, I never had a problem with the app. Uh, the problem is just getting the app now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the new one also connects to your remote via bluetooth mm -hmm. at least the one i bought did i assume the same thing for you yeah you get the option to do bluetooth or wi-fi yeah so you don't have to connect your remote to anything it just you download the app you tell it to communicate you push a button and it works so mm -hmm. all it is it is definitely a lot easier than it used to be a much better interface um and i agree like it a lot. I don't use that anymore. I bought one about six months before I got my Fire TV. The Fire TV Cube has that functionality all built into the Fire TV Cube. And mm -hmm. you do the same kind of thing where it's got an IR blaster and can control all your devices in itself. 
so I don't use the fire remote anymore, but or the harmony remote anymore. But it is um, it is nice. Yeah. Well, now that I've so, got it, you know, paired up with the uh, with the Echo, right? I don't even I don't have much need to use the remote except to just adjust the volume is all. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and welcome to the club. After the after the show's off air, I'll show you the secret handshake. So that uh, <laughs> show that on air though with other. But I think, uh, yeah, just... yeah, it, it, it was it was a good deal. I think uh, when when this particular version of Harmony Remote came out, it was three hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. Yeah. You can get it on Amazon now for just a little less than two fifty, right? So um, not not too bad. It, yeah. it was a little pricey, I thought, but. Um, well, no, that's uh, actually normal for Harmony remotes. They are not cheap. <laughs> right. No, yeah, I think I paid like 400. Well, mine was like four or 500 at the time, but I worked at CompUSA and I was able to get it at cost. Um, mm. So I ended up paying like 250 or, you know, whatever. Yeah, it was basically I, I, half. Yeah, I think the last Harmony remote, which I think I still have downstairs in my garage. It was uh, two. Uh, it was over two hundred dollar purchase to for that one, and uh, we stopped using it because a lot of our stuff stopped using infrared. So mm. it's just, I prefer RF anyway because me too. I like being able to lay in bed and have my remote and not have to point it at the TV and just be able to point it in any direction I want as long as I'm Agreed. pushing the right buttons. Agreed. Um, so or just have a smart speaker take care of it. <laughs> uh, my Roku has an RF remote already and that's all i need <laughs> I, I don't have a home stereo in my bedroom um yeah. i don't have a tv in my and i never use the home theater that's in my living room i've got that that uh dolby uh atmos system in the living room and i never turn it on so Aww. i'm yeah. actually thinking about moving it out of the living room and because into the garage. No, probably downstairs, <laughs> um, where it might actually get used. But uh, oh, yeah. And I will quickly, I will quickly mention. I'm still watching Bosch. Excellent season. I'm not all the way through yet, but uh, uh, yeah. That if you haven't watched Bosch, go out, go out and watch it. Right. I mean, if you subscribe to Amazon, then uh, there's no reason why you, you shouldn't watch that show. Yeah, I finished it. I still love the show. <laughs> there, there's just a couple things in this season that were obviously either thrown in for filler or whatever. It just was like that was completely pointless. Um, but yes, watch Bosch. Yeah. The other thing you should watch is The Death of Stalman. Have you guys seen this? Apparently, it came out in 2017. Right. It's got Steve Buscemi and Jeffrey Tambor and a whole bunch of people um, that basically star or they play the uh, members of Stalin's cabinet when he dies. Mm -hmm. And then there's that vacuum of power. Um, it is hilarious. And I recommend it to everybody. Watch The Death of Stalin. Um <laughs> You know, back when that movie first come out, I thought, oh, man, I, I, I got to watch this, right? And then that's just one of those I let fall through the cracks, right? Yeah, it and showed up on it. Netflix. And I, like I said, I have so much trouble finding anything to watch on Netflix. Uh, mm -hmm. And I went, eh, oh, okay, Steve Buscemi and Jeffrey Tambor, all right, I guess. It's like, I didn't know what to expect going in. And then I realized, oh, yep, nope, this is, this is funny. And, but it's funny not because they're making jokes. It's funny because the way communism works is so asinine. The same reason that a lot of the stuff about uh, uh, what's it called was funny, even though it was an absolute tragedy. You see all the <laughs> just the, the whole reason it happened was because they refused to acknowledge that there ever could be a problem. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> uh but no watch it. it it's funny uh and then uh that that's it for me 
I, I am watching the the trailer for it, and um, I must say that uh, looks like the right kind of humor for right now because it's absurd, and you need some absurd humor right there. And the worst part is it's it's absurd because it's based in truth. Kind of, kind of true. <laughs> Wait, it, it's obviously played up. It's obviously not exactly how things happen, but boy, it could. Yeah. <laughs> it could be like that. Yeah. It'll be interesting to get my wife's take on that, who actually grew up in the in the Soviet Union. So, mm -hmm. But <laughs> was she... Oh, I guess she, uh, she probably would have been alive when, when... Well, was she alive when Stalin was still in power? So he died in, what, 63? No. He was no, in the no, 60s, because no. Khrushchev took over for him. Who, yeah, she was. So it was late fifties, early sixties when he died. Yeah, she was a lot. She was born when uh, when when she was born. Brezhnev was still the. Oh, okay. Um, he died in fifty three. Oh, he was fifty. I thought he died like fifty seven. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. So she would have been older than my dad. Yeah. Or, or if she yeah, was my alive. my wife's quite a bit younger. Than yeah, me, yeah, but yeah. She she was. Um, um, I think Brezhnev was the uh, prime okay. minister whenever, okay. whenever he was born. Word. <laughs> oh, the other thing is I finally finished Waco. Oh, yeah. They did a, oh, yeah. they, I, I will say that miniseries. It's very seldom that I can say that miniseries was great. Hmm. This one, that miniseries was great. Okay. Oh. And I, I I highly recommend everybody check it out because I'm it's poignant. The way they handle it, uh, they approach things is very even. Uh, it didn't really feel like there was, you know, the, the writer trying to impose their view on everybody. And the fact that it's written from two different books from two different people, like one was a sub survivor, the other was the FBI negotiator. So there, it, the thing is pretty much everything in those two books that lined up is, you know, and then you might get a little bit of the, uh, you know, I, I don't know because I didn't see that or, mm -hmm. you know, I was on the other side. Uh, but for the most part, it... I, I think they handled it very well. And uh, the radio guy in that is a hero of mine. Uh, so, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, the the speeches that he was giving on the radio are word for word what the, ra the local radio guy uh, broadcasted at the time. And that dude's cool. So, um, yeah. Uh, other than that, I think we should shut this down. Thanks everybody for joining me and, uh, all you out there. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact, why come join us, <laughs> come join us live. We do this. Uh, it, what is this Wednesday? It is Wednesday. <laughs> I know it's hard Wednesday. to tell anymore. One still Wednesdays, uh, every Wednesday night, 9 PM central here on Twitch. And, uh, yeah, uh, you get to participate in chat, uh, you get to have all the fun and vote on titles, which we're going to do here in the post show. Everybody go tbs.showbot.tv. We'll throw that link up in the chat, uh, head over there, start voting. Uh, we'll get to that here in the post show. Um, and other than that, anybody need anything before we shut this down? I got to figure out what happened to my lights. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that later. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks, everybody. We will catch you next time. See you in the Bye. post show. Bye. The Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>